Today, we're talking about what to expect when scaling your usage of OKRs, whether it's coming from working on OKRs in small teams and in spreadsheets or being totally new to OKRs, then there's plenty of challenges involved with scaling that uh, across an entire business. So we're going to talk about some of the things that we see working every day with companies in that same position. And uh, today we're talking with, with Nick from our customer success team. So Nick, what are the biggest challenges that people run into with an OKR platform when moving from something like using Excel sheets? Yeah, I would have to say the biggest challenge is going to be adoption. And that's adoption on multiple levels, whether that's going to be your executive level, SLT, and end user, really coming to a shared understanding of what the purpose of GTM Hub is, or just using any platform across an organization, and also what the best practices are going to be. So as we implement this, how do they implement it inside their teams, inside end users? So that shared understanding of purpose, what the outcome of using this is going to be, not just get in here, make updates, right? What are we driving towards so that during that time, that shared vision of what we're looking to accomplish is held in the center. And we can actually have at the end of this, say a retrospective and understanding of what worked, what didn't work. And that builds a foundation for us sort of launching into future quarters, future years, knowing what success looked like and how we're going to replicate that. So where do you think the, the sort of trigger for that, that engagement and adoption comes from? Is that an, an executive buy-in thing? Do we need executives to be on board and pushing that from the top down? I think... For the big example, yeah, there needs to be that leadership drive as to why we're using this. What's the big why behind it? If we don't have top level understanding what that why is and communicating it further, it can fall flat. I think, you know, as much as organizations are bottom up, top down, horizontal these days, there's still that role and leadership that really has people understand this is the purpose of it and this is what we're moving towards. It's just like OKRs and strategy, right? This is the end result. How are we going to accomplish that? And that's where we'll get that end user engagement. But up front, there's really got to be a launch and a shared vision of why we're actually doing this. Nick, would you say that typically leadership has that vision, that why, or do you think that it takes time to really develop that understanding? Uh, I think there's multiple use cases for it. In smaller organizations, I think when we start meeting with leadership, there's more of a shared vision. Um, one, because allocating resources to any new platform um, at a smaller level, that can be a big investment, right? So you've got to have multiple stakeholders on board. As you scale, as we start looking at enterprises, it more often than not can start in say one business unit or say the CTO is fully on board and then there's not full across buy-in. Um, so that conversation has to start one with the CTO to understand say what they're looking to accomplish. And then for us to really partner with them and other executives to get the shared success metrics across. So it's not just going to be one person as we're looking at enterprise, it's going to be multiple. And how do we basically tailor, you know, this onboarding, this implementation to hit those metrics that everybody is geared towards? Because you have to have that larger buy-in, especially when we're looking at organizations that are big in size. So those are the thoughts from sort of the high level, how we're going to implement I think what's really important is also the technical aspect. So Craig and Aiden, what are sort of the roadblocks you run into at the beginning from the technical integration aspect when trying to gather buy-in from executives or senior leaders? Yeah, I think um, one that I think is really specific to using a, an OKR platform rather than just talking about OKRs generally is is when we talk about automating key results. So that is setting up, uh, pulling in data from, from some of the system within the company to automatically up, 
update key results rather than having someone go in and, and automatically do, I mean, manually do it themselves. Um, I think when people see that functionality, their instant reaction is to try and find what most people are using and set those up and start automating everyone's key results wherever they can. I think, I don't think that's a mistake. I think that's just not the most valuable use of people's time. I think the best way to go about it is if you go around your executive teams and find out, research what are those big KPIs, what are those big metrics that people need to, to really make agile strategic de decisions within the business and start tracking those first. So are they you know, MRR at the, the company level, churn at the company level, those sort of things? Start tracking those. They're going to help the business as a whole react to, to make the changes they need to, to keep that agility of OKRs. Um, and then what you'll also find is further down, other people are going to also be using that same data in their, their key results. So you, you're getting a, a few levels of it, killing two birds with one stone, but it's, it's really for the minimal amount of effort to get the most amount of value, I think that's where you need to start. And then from there, you can go on and, and do whatever you want once you're comfortable with it. I think that's definitely where people should start. Peyton, what do you think the biggest benefits of automating key results are besides doing it manually? So why would I want to automate it instead of do it manually? I think it's agility, um, really. I think if you as a as senior leader are relying on everyone in the company to update their key results on time for you to have up-to-date data. Even if they did that, it's going to be a week out of date. It's going to be two weeks out of date. Um, by automating your key results, everything is perfectly up-to-date data and you can make those quick decisions based off of it. It's yeah. nice that people don't have that overhead of having to go in and manually update their key results all the time, but... Um, really the actual value is is that agility to make decisions based on the data that you have yeah that makes me think about another sort of pain point roadblock we can run into is that everybody for the most part wants to go fast right they've made this investment so they want to get everything up and running every feature that we have possible they want to start utilizing and that's where I think our partnership from both customer success and technical success really plays a big part because we can leverage what we've learned with other organizations as to it might be st smart to slow down a little bit at the beginning to launch us into going fast and being able to make those agile decisions, mm -hmm. right? And where I see this happen the most is they already have an understanding of what OKRs and exactly what they're gonna utilize them for and what they're geared towards. Usually where we come in that I think the biggest benefit is, is saying, hey, let's actually get down to a foundation of what OKRs are. So what's the shared understanding? Making sure that we have that at the high level plus including what our best practices are. More often than not, most people need them. Um, and from there, making sure the right people go through the trainings, right? That people are actually looking at this as it's not going to be perfect the first round, but via practice, we're going to get to executing even faster as we move forward. And to your point, I think that plays in with integrations. It's huge that everybody wants every single integration out front and really what's the value that that's going to provide. Um, does that ring true for you guys? Absolutely. I think every client I've had, you know, during the kickoff, they're like, we want to have this done in, you know, next week. <laughs> we, we know as we, all of us have been through many, many implementations that, you know, if you move too fast, it's just going to, you know, one, it could just end in disaster and, you know, everyone hates the tool, you get no engagement or, you know, people don't really understand what OKRs are and it's just not adding value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think when it's, when it's a, when you're implementing a tool that is just for your specific team, you know, maybe it's a sales force or something like that. You can go at that pace because it's part of what everyone needs to use for their day-to-day -day job. When you're introducing something new, like an OKR tool, I think 
a lot of people might be skeptical and see it as overhead if they don't get behind the, the whole strategy of it. So I think taking that sort of thing slowly, letting people see the value and then sort of ramping up your usage of it is a much, a much better tactic. Yeah. I think to what you said, Nick, about giving people a tool without guidance and best practice is right. It's a, it's a recipe for, for disaster. I think in our role, one of the things that we focus on making sure people have is at all levels, making sure people have the space within the tool that's tailored to them. So um, we've talked about this on other videos, but we one really common one is uh, boards that are for team meetings. So an insight board that people can use to, to govern their team meetings, um, everything they need to, to run a team meeting around OKRs, as well as having reports for executives about all their strategic objectives, and then also things for OKR champions to keep track of who is updating their key results and who's how's the process going going generally. So I think that part of hitting the everyone out with their own unique part of the tool is also a big part of the guidance that, that we provide. Well, I really like your point about it's again to that output to outcome is those team reports, executive dashboards, right? What we use our expertise in is that this tool, like any other tool, is only going to get you so far, right? It's how you leverage what the output is of the tool to get those outcomes that you want. OKRs, you want to execute on strategy. So with these insight boards, with these dashboards, reports that we put together, we further are able to partner with them with, yes, so now that you have the data, the up-to-date up to data, how do you use these in conversation? So what's that next step that's outside of the platform, right? So that you can start embedding basically how you talk about OKRs, OKRs themselves into your day-to-day -day culture, because that conversation aspect is going to help accelerate results almost as much as really starting to use our platform. And I think that is basically a pain point and also something, a solution that we bring for any platform anybody uses. The data's in there, that's great. What are you gonna do with it now? And really the conversations for OKRs, that's a huge value point. So guys, what are some of the things that we've helped customers with in the past? Uh, really talking about scaling OKRs. So going from starting with OKRs, maybe within a small team or within Excel sheets, and then really taking it to an entire business, a big enterprise uh, scale transformation. Yeah, I think from a customer success standpoint is really that partnership upfront on determining success criteria, right? So an understanding when we first meet as to, okay, what is it we want to accomplish? And really setting everything we do as the foundation, not only for accomplishing that, but being able to replicate that as we start to expand into other business units, as we start looking at branching out throughout the entire organization, is that what have we learned and what have we used so that we can easily replicate this as we scale? Because, it's not always possible to go through the entire process again, to teach um, exactly how we wanna use the platform, when to use the platform and run through all of that discovery conversation, right? It's incumbent on us that there's the documentation both in the platform and what we spoke to so that we can easily when bringing others in, replicate and grow. It's replicate again and grow. and. I think a part of that too, and I wanna get your guys' take, is as we bring more people, more teams into the platform, what do we utilize from a technical aspect to get them up to speed faster so that we accelerate their uptake and also results? So a, a big thing that we do from a technical standpoint is uh, have various reporting that can get people up to speed and get users up to speed from an OKR methodology standpoint, or even a data standpoint, and uh, really get the most value out of the reporting section. So for example, we have the OKR 101, which we talked in 
past episodes about, but it just basically teaches users the OKR methodology that the company is implementing. So there's no gap between the newcomers and the people that have been using this methodology for some time and really avoiding OKRs that aren't adding the strategic value that the company is looking for. Okay, so that was scaling OKRs. Uh, thanks, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>